morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. It's Valerie Shepard. I'm Valerie Shepard, founder and CEO of the Hartley Center for Mindfulness and Self Mastery, coming to you live on this yet another Wednesday. It's funny how I say that every week, yet another, as though I think somehow Wednesdays are going to stop. Not anytime soon, I pray. Not anytime soon. I hope I have thousands of Wednesdays yet to go in this uh, experience that I call my life. <laughs> it's a somewhat um, poignant day, this particular Wednesday or this particular date, I'll say, every year, especially in the United States. Um, uh, there's a lot going on. And so I'm gonna talk about some of that today. Um, but I wanna start with an acknowledgement, which is a shout out to my, uh, one of my longest standing friends and uh, sister-in-law on her birthday, which is today. Tammy Daber Hurst, many blessings, much love. Uh, I'm grateful for you in my life and I'm wishing you the best always. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tammy. Happy birthday to you. I hope you have a beautiful day. And um, for all the rest of us, everybody else who's born on this day, happy birthday to you too. And for the rest of us, I just want to say this moment of reflection on what the meaning of today is for those of us in the United States and, and around the world who had to deal with the fallout, who somehow were touched by the things that happened on 9-11-2001 in the U.S. And uh, I'm the daughter of a career Marine. In fact, several generations of men in my family have served this country in the armed forces. I even, uh, my family even received photographs that a traveling friend took of my great great uncle Ben's grave site in Normandy, uh, where he died fighting for this country. And so, whenever something like attacks and defenses and armed forces and military and men in uniform are brought up. And I do really, having seen my father in his dress whites and his dress blues as a career Marine, whoo baby, uh, high and tight in that uniform is pretty magnificent. And um, I think sometime on my Facebook wall, I shared pictures of him that bring me great joy. And my mother, a career uh, Department of Defense civilian. So we've got a lot of that uh, protect and serve, uh, patriotism, honor um, in the bones, in the genes, epigenetically. That is a part of how I'm wired. Uh, it's an interesting dance this idea of um, defense. And I know that today there will be lots of uh, memorials and markings of the time uh, almost 20 years ago. It's amazing. Um, it doesn't feel that far. But this, I can't ever, because of my military wiring, I guess, see things like this and not get touched in them in a, in a different way, I think, than many others. Um, it's, it's hard to explain, can you tell? But anything, I, anyway, I'm sending peace and love uh, to all those who are affected and who's, who are feeling a disturbance, because today I really wanna talk about this disturbance and disturbances, especially those below the surface that seem to have gone. Have you had those where you're like, I thought I'd already dealt with that. I, I, I mean, 
why is it coming up now? I thought it was, I thought it was long gone, those disturbances that we um, say farewell to only, uh, they're still there. Um, and they come up to tell us that they're there and sometimes not so opportune ways, but today is a great time to talk about those. So it's about, I, I, I titled this, Why Are You Making Me Feel This Way? Because I feel like we, we need to get to that below the surface thing and create a connection with it, create a way to heal and release it, not to ever let it go to the point where it never happened. That's not what I'm saying. And I don't even think that's possible. The wounds that are in us are a part of us. And in fact, they're divine parts of us. They're aspects, aspects. They are aspects of what we are and who we are. That when we um, make peace with them, when we fall in love with them, we create an opportunity for the greatest happiness within us while those things still are there. So it's a both and equation. The idea is that I can create a relationship with my disturbances such that I understand them. And therefore, they don't rub, run me subconsciously. They don't have control over me subconsciously. Do you, um, I really would love that to be an understanding that what we don't, uh, people call it process, what we don't process. I like to think of it as creating a relationship. What I don't, what I'm not in relationship with, I don't understand. I can't make peace with, I can't embrace, I can't fall in love with, I can't create the life I want when there are these things that I call wounds that are floating around below the surface of me, kind of driving me in one way or the other. Good morning, thanks for joining me. So we talk about, I talk about the disturbance, right? That thing underneath, it could be emotional wounding, it could be a past hurt, all emotional wounding. Underneath the surface, it's there. Sometimes it comes up loudly to get our attention. So something happens, someone says something, and we are triggered, right? We are triggered. Miriam Webster defines a trigger as to cause an intense, and unusually negative emotional action, reaction in someone. That's one of the one of the definitions that are uh, shared in different uh, dictionaries. But that's Miriam Webster's definition number three. You know, as a person with a degree in communications, I love to bring the definitions and I like to know what I'm really talking about in terms of definitions and precision around communication. So this idea of being triggered, right? This idea is critical to the relationship that you have with others and to situational dynamics. So basically what's happening is something outside me is triggering something that's already inside me. Something outside me is triggering something that is already inside me. It pops it open. And it doesn't only pop it open so that I feel it and go into distraughtness. Is that a word? Distraughtness. It pops it open so that I can be aware of what's inside me so I know what's there and how to deal with it and whether it's impacting what's going on outside me and who I'm being outside me. Triggers. So I've been noticing lately that there's some disturbance that's wanting to get my attention. Now I thought this disturbance was completely about somebody else. I thought I was feeling compassion and and I was really anchoring in on this one friend who we'll call um, B. We're changing names to protect the innocent. So we'll call this friend B and I was really worried about B and I was um, feeling I wanted her energy. So I sent her a text and, um, and then said, let's talk. And then I wasn't available when she was available. Then I finally just picked up the phone and said, hey, what's going on? And then I let her know that there was a situation that I was seeing with her that was creating a disturbance in me. Like, shout out to Dr. Sean Duperin. I'll talk about her a little bit later on as well. Um, and as I was talking to her about it, it became crystal clear. This was not about her at all. 
the situation with her was this beautiful trigger that was helping me see me. Do you get that? I was looking at something between her and other people and feeling something from that and then wanting to talk to her about it and wanting to be righteous about that. And I even told her, it's like bringing up anger and resentment every time I think of you in this situation. And then I went, oh my gosh, this isn't about you. This isn't about you, it's about me. It's about me. So this situation with her that was bringing up my rancor was showing me that I had some unhealed um, trauma inside. Mm -hmm. Hurt. It was hurt. Um, and I was able to, in this conversation with this wise being, able to talk to me and to see what was going on with me. So I want to presence that and I want to share that. Uh, I can't share these stories necessarily because there are people involved um, and I'm not going to out them. Uh, but I will tell you that there are things that happen in the world and they trigger a sense of something. It, maybe it's a sense of joy and that's fantastic. It's still worth knowing. I wonder why that hits me so much. What, I wonder why seeing a child at play hits me so much. What is it telling me about me? I wonder why when it rains, it hits me so much. I wonder what that has to do with me. And why is it, what is it telling me about me? I wonder when I see two people arguing that it gets me and it, it makes me upset so much so that I have to leave the room. I wonder when I see something on television or, or I hear about certain dynamics or I read about certain dynamics or I hear about stories with other people. Why, why does that hit me so much? So not everything is about you and not everything needs to be dissected and diagnosed. And you can tell, so people ask me, so how do I know when it's about me and I should look deeper? And so what I usually say is when my reaction is strong, like when your emotional reaction to the situation is strong, someone says something and all of a sudden you're like, you make me so mad, like that, Woo, what is that? They didn't really make you anything. There's a choice. You just missed the opportunity to choose whether you were going to be this way about it or that way about it. When you can stay in neutral in that situation, even when somebody's in your face, rah, 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 and you can say, wow, look at that being. There's an other in my presence who's feeling a lot of anger, throwing a lot of anger at, my, at me. I wonder what that's about. Like when you can stay neutral, not about you, not triggering your own thing, when what they say and what they do triggers something in you in such a way that it's like Mount Vesuvius erupting, even if it's not that, bah, maybe it's just a quiet sense of, oh my God, I, I'm like off my center. Then it's about you. There's something inside that that's about you. So the way this went for me, I had this intense emotional reaction, thought it was about this situation with my friend B. As I went into it, as I was talking to her, listening to myself, consciously hearing me and what I'm saying, I went, uh-oh, this is really about me. I loved that moment. I loved to be able to share that moment with another conscious being of choice, as Satyan Raja would say, a conscious being of choice. And Barbara and I spent a beautiful uh, phone call as I went into this and she went into her own space and I felt some healing was going on and then I committed to continue healing. So this is what happens. This is how you do this. Okay. First, right. And if you notice the disturbance, like even something as big as nine 11 um, and you're miles away, and now we're 20 years away, which is 18 years away, which is definitely miles. And it's still triggering a disturbance. What is that about? What is that about? I didn't lose anyone. I wasn't there. I didn't, I wasn't involved in the cleanup or this. I wasn't there. What's that about? So you can go through that. I wasn't involved in the situation between B 
and the situation. I just was observing it and still it brought up something. So that to me, I went right to, this is, this is about me. There's an opportunity here. So number one, notice that the disturbance is there. And rather than try to push it away, I don't want to feel this disturbance or running away from it, Ugh. turning in the other direction, trying to make happy, trying to get all spiritual or godly on it, hang out with it, connect with it. Your answers are in it, not in some thing you do to try and make yourself not feel it or not notice it. In my book, I call those the false elixirs of feel good. The drinks, the partying, the watching TV, the reading a book, the things you do to pull yourself out of the disturbance are false elixirs of feel good. They're giving you a momentary feel good, but they're not dealing with the disturbance and that's how you get the long-term happy. So you notice you create a relationship with it. Take a step toward it. What is this disturbance about? If it's safe, you can do that with someone else like I did with B. We're sharing together. If it's safe, and by safe I mean you feel emotionally safe that the other will receive you and not try to fix you, that they'll just hold sacred space for you to do your own dance. Accept and allow it. Feel what you wanna feel, feel what's coming up. I felt resentment, I felt anger, I felt like it was an unjust thing that was happening. I felt betrayal, I felt abandonment, and that was the big one. That was the big one. So for me, her situation was letting me see that I have unhealed abandonment inside me. It feels like, and, and the, when it comes up, it feels like somebody didn't take care of me. It feels like broken promises. It feels like expectations unfulfilled. It feels like I gave my trust and I was expecting something in return and it never came. And as I went there, I was like, oh my gosh, here's another situation, another situation, another situation within the last, I'm going to call it two months where things have come up and triggered this feeling of unhealed abandonment, um, upset. And it, uh, abandonment always triggers for me a feeling of unlovability. I'm not lovable enough. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been abandoned. I'm not lovable enough. Otherwise, the situation wouldn't have happened. I'm not lovable enough. Otherwise, they would have taken better care of my heart. They would have loved me and, and held me and mm, nurtured and protected me. And I make that okay. That's what I feel. It's not wrong to feel that way. These aren't negative emotions. It's just unhealed upset. Unhealed disturbance. Deep. It's been, I've been carrying it around for a while. These present situations are showing me what's deep inside there. And if you trace it back, so I talk to my students and my clients, like where can we trace this back? You don't have to do this always. It is helpful to know, oh, I know what this is related to. Um, scientists, psychologists, doctors are saying, that are showing actually, that most of the trauma that, um, that we are experiencing today, so that unhealed stuff actually happened way back when, like zero to eight. I've actually been able, I talk in my book about being able to trace some things back to the womb. Um, scientists are showing epigenetically that we might carry some trauma from generation to generation. <clears throat> Excuse me. That can especially be true in cultures where there's been deep trauma in the culture. The fear, the upset can be passed down through genetics. So that's really helpful to know. And it may be powerful to go on the journey of where did this come from? When did it first get anchored in me as a part of the release? It's not necessary all the times. And some, some people, I have clients who for a long time, even while we're working on healing, the relationship with this trauma cannot trace it back as far as um, their youth. And that's okay. 
So getting quiet and acknowledging it, allow it to be acknowledged. See what else comes up, what other situations. So I shared with you my situations of broken promises and hurt and what the ultimate thing I was dealing with was abandonment, unlovability that came from my past, not necessarily in this moment. Here's the important thing. In this moment, the people and the situations and the dynamics that are triggering this are not necessarily abandoning me, giving me false promises, and doing all the things that I was feeling. Those aren't necessarily true of what's happening now. They just triggered that it was there. And being able to see the difference is where the magnificence in this exercise lies. Being able to see, oh, wow, I feel some sadness for B. And actually what's going on is this is not about this present moment. It's actually triggering something from the past and bringing it up right now. That's powerful. That is powerful. Oh, my present is fine. I am fine. Everything right now is working in, in the highest and best for all concerned. It's beautiful. And what's happening right now is not what I'm feeling. What I'm feeling is being triggered from my past. And in that way, the trigger, the person or the situation that triggered you is a blessing. It's a gift from your higher self, from God, from the divine, whatever you want to call that aspect of you that can see things from a vantage point that you maybe can't see, but is trying to get your attention through your experiences, through the others in your life, through the circumstantial and situational dynamics that you are journeying through. A gift. What's going on below the surface of you is important to the experience of your outer life. Why? Because there are universal laws operating 24-7, 365, whether you like it or not, know it or like not, understand them or not, just like the law of, of gravity, law of thermodynamics, laws of electricity, those physical laws of the universe are operating, whether you know the formulas or not. We just take them for granted and accept that gravity is holding me to the planet. Well, it's the same thing with law of reflection, law of attraction, law of karma, law of gratitude, law of reciprocity. Those things are operating on your energetic vibration. And the universe is always saying yes to whatever you're putting out there. So it's important to know if your subconscious vibration is putting out there feelings of abandonment, unlovability, not being seen, not being heard, not being understood, not being valued, because that will come back to you in the outer experience. As within, so without. Hermetic law. So I know that to receive the highest and best, and by highest and best, I'm talking about living my purpose. I'm talking about um, having my intentions fulfilled, come to fruition. I'm talking about feeling and experiencing bliss. The highest levels of happiness are bliss. And to be walking in that, to see gifts coming to me without working hard for them, like to have the life of ease, peace, and grace, I'm drooling, ease, peace, and grace, that I intend, I need to get into a space of ease, peace, and grace within. So once you get clear on what that disturbance is, if you need help healing it, get help. There are coaches like me, we do spiritual work with you, there are others. If, you, if you're unable to unlock the gift in that disturbance for yourself, just ask for help. There are so many different ways that people are there to provide you what you need to get the most out of whatever that disturbance is. And some of them are deeper than others and some of them are brutal and that's okay. To make peace with them within is how your outer experiences 
does an up-level shift. One of the most powerful things I have found for dealing with um, situations and people, doesn't matter, uh, is forgiveness. Forgiveness work is powerful, especially on a day like today where we are remembering terrorist attacks that killed thousands of people, um, 9-11, 2001 in the United States. Um, forgiveness is very important. And I don't think of forgiving and forgetting, and I don't think of forgiveness as something I'm doing about the other people. I think about forgiveness as what I'm doing for myself. It's how I allow my heart to be freer, free from the disturbance, not to forget it, but to take away the sting, the, the awfulness, the pain. So you've seen me do the Ho'oponopono um, indigenous practice. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you, simple prayer. Um, I've talked about Dr. Sean Duperin and her modality called accepting the apology that you will never receive which is what got her organization, Project Forgive, a nonprofit, nominated for the 2016 Nobel Peace Prize. That's a powerful, oh my gosh, I love that exercise. I use it in my uh, workshops and my courses and on myself. I encourage you to go to learn more about that at Project Forgive. Um, one of the things that I learned on one of the journeys I've taken uh, for my own growth, uh, it was a vision quest and we learned about a thing called the death lodge, which comes from uh, Native American practices. And uh, I took my hurts and um, traumas from past relationships and situations into the death lodge one by one over the course of two days in the wilderness by myself while fasting, only drinking water to really clear this out of my system. So I encourage and invite you to go through the process. When these emotional disturbances come up, they're really for you. They're really not about the other person. And when you can say, why are you making me feel this way? and go, oh yeah, this feeling is coming from inside me and it's coming up from me, to me, for me, by me, about me. And when you can create a loving relationship with it, you can give yourself more happiness than you can imagine. Thank you for sharing this time with me. I'm Valerie Shepard founder and CEO of the Hartley Center for Mindfulness and Self-Mastery. And this has been the Hump Day Happy Chat. And I just wanna say a prayer for the world today. Uh, this is the Meta Prayer, also known as the Prayer of Loving Kindness, from a teaching on loving kindness from the Buddha. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings awaken to the light of their true nature and may all beings be free. And all beings includes you and me and everything on the planet. Stay well and choose happy. Bye now. Thank you so much for joining. Please help me create a ripple effect of love and light by sharing this wherever you are. Share it in your social media. I guarantee you there is some.